What's up friends, Chantastic here, and today I'm gonna to show you some of the async special files in Next.js 13 beta app directory, you know, all the cool stuff that's out there right now. Uh, we're doing our week two recap of React Holiday, so if you're not signed up, check out react.holiday and uh, get all of the emails uh, right to your inbox talking about all these cool new features. Today we're gonna cover all of the async routing features. So this will be things like if you're fetching data, you may have an error or uh, a loading page or not found. These are all states that Next will manage for you if you use these special files. So let's dive in, cover all of those now. Okay, so first things first, start your server npm run dev. Check that out in the browser. Yes, we get it and we can close that up. We need a new route that actually fetches data. So we'll add a new file at route hello and we'll use a page.jsx. Remember, pages need to be page.jsx. They can't just be like an index anymore or a file with the route that you want to use. Let's get a basic page set up here. Export default function, hello page and return paragraph hello. Save that and visit our hello route. Perfect, so we have hello. But we want to actually fetch data and I'm gonna make a request to await a fetch to http colon forward slash localhost 3000 api slash hello. Now, you may be wondering, like, where does this uh, whole API thing come from? If you're new to Next, there's a sample API page right here in pages slash API, and it just returns JSON, just a static John Doe JSON. It's just a starter endpoint to show you how APIs work, but we're gonna use it here. So let's close that. And immediately we see an error. So we have this await error right here. And the reason we're seeing that is because this function is not an async function. As soon as we change it to an async function, that error goes away. So key thing to know, if you have a async React components, you need to mark them or export the async function. Okay, so now we can await the uh, data request.json and here, interpolate data dot name. No name yet, so we're gonna have to do some debugging. The problem is just me, I forgot to await this. Uh, that's the problem. So now that we are properly awaiting our uh, request JSON, uh, we will see that data. And that's all you need to know. You just need to export an async function and do your async work and uh, render it like usual, super cool. Now, oftentimes when you're requesting data asynchronously, you are gonna have some latency or waiting. Hopefully it's pretty fast, but sometimes you might be waiting a while. So let's add a loading page now, which is another one of Next special files. First, let's make this component really slow. We can do this just by awaiting a new promise, taking a resolve function, using set timeout and calling that function after 1,000 seconds. Not 1,000 seconds, 1,000 milliseconds, one second. Uh, let's save that and see what happens. So we don't see much of a change now right here, um, but we will as soon as we add a loading.jsx file. Loading.jsx. This file can be pretty boring. We're just gonna export default function, hello loading, and return anything we want. Uh, we'll just go simple right now, loading. Super boring, uh, but it will work. Now, just in case you missed it, watch right here. I'm gonna hit refresh, refresh. We see loading for a second and then our data comes in. All we had to do was add this loading file. Nothing special about this. This is just a garden variety default export function. Okay, so what happens if your request fails, if it doesn't go through at all? Let's try doing something for that as well. Uh, I'm gonna change uh, this and I'm going to make a different request. Uh, we'll request to a service that I uh, like a lot, which is HTTPS slash slash HTTP stat dot us. Now what we can do with this is we can actually make a request to a specific status code to enact certain states. So I wanna proc the error, so I'm going to use a 500 response and we get an error, super cool. Next has this kind of built-in error handling system, but we can see that there's nothing rendered here. Our application doesn't handle that error gracefully. We can fix that by adding a error.jsx file. 
Very similar, we'll export default function, hello error, and return uh, anything we want. Something went wrong. Okay, save that, hit refresh, and nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, let's check our server logs and see if there's anything helpful in here. So, okay, cool, I see an error right here. Um, functions cannot be passed directly to client components before, uh, because they're not serializable. Okay, so this means that we need to turn this into a client component. So use client. Now, this is one thing that you need to keep in mind for error components is that they have to be client components. We just use this use client directive as we've seen in previous lessons and uh, we should be good to go. So let's hit refresh um, and yeah, we see this kind of heads up display from next, but we also get our error page rendered. What else can we do with this? Well, uh, this is a kind of non-specific error. So what we may wanna do is say, um, if uh, the response is not okay, um, then throw um, some more specific error, like failed to fetch. Save that. And so now we see our error in here as well as in our logs. Error failed to fetch. Now you'll notice that these errors also come with this digest code. In this error function, I wanna take this error and see kind of like what we get from it, what we can see. Uh, so let's uh, kind of wrap this in a fragment. Use a pre-tag, json.stringify null two. Now when we serialize this, all we see is this digest code, but it does match to the error digest ID that we get in this error, which is pretty cool. Um, however, we can also do some really cool stuff with the error, which will actually include um, all of the information that we have here. So we could use react.use effect and send this error to some logging service. So right now I'm just gonna console.log the error and we'll only do this anytime the error changes. So hit save there. Let's give ourselves a little bit of an identifier just, just to be safe. Finally, we have to import react, react from react like that to use this use effect. We'll get the error, but I'd like to see that it actually logged. Um, and so yeah, so we see our identifier, which I added, wat, um, and then the error. So if we want to, we could send this off to some error reporting service like so and have access to the actual error. Now there's one more thing that you might wanna know is that we can actually take a reset function here, this is provided by Next, and uh, create a button for it, reset, that on click we call. That will create a button right here which will actually reset this error boundary. Now, my understanding is it doesn't actually like refetch, uh, refetch the request, we can reset this error boundary, but because this is like a client side request, it's not going to refetch the data for that page. Uh, tell me what you think about this, or if you know more than me. This is all I know at this point, so if you know more than me, like if you could actually refire that request, um, how that would work, I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so we've gotten all the way to error now, and uh, we have one more other type of error that we may wanna handle, which is a not found. Uh, the URL is amazing, but you can kinda inject whatever you want into a URL, and so there's a potential that we could have, that we can make fetch requests to IDs that don't exist. So, let's handle not found. Go into our page component and uh, make a request for a 404. And to do this properly, I actually wanna wrap all of this in a function so we have more control over our return values. So let's uh, move this up and create a function, async function, fetch, fetch user. Take an ID, which we won't use right now, and uh, move all this in there. Now, in the event that this fails, we actually don't wanna throw an error directly from here anymore. We just wanna return undefined, um, and that'll give us a few more options. Uh, and we'll return data if we get to this point in the function. Now let's call this function inside of our components. Let user equal await fetch user. Uh, we don't need to pass it an ID right now. And then if there's not a user, like if we get undefined back in this case, we'll call a function not found. 
And my understanding is that this actually does a redirect. Could be wrong, again, let me know. Uh, and we need to import that from next navigation. Okay, let's save this and uh, see how it goes. Oh, one last thing, we gotta return this. Return await request.json. Now we actually get a helpful error, which is uh, next not found. So let's add a not found route, not found.jsx and export a component. Turn page not found. And there we go, look at that. Uh, we made a request to this page, we got a 404 and through all of our nonsense here, we actually procced this page not found. Um, so we have control over that as well. Now, one of the really cool things that I wanna show you is, is that nested layouts actually play a big part in this. So if I take my layout file right here inside of my app directory and actually extend it to have some other things inside of it, let's put a, a header here. It just says my app. Now, because this is part of the layout that is above our hello route, the my app part of the layout renders even though this page wasn't found in the hello route. So this is really cool. Only parts of your page need to fail. And so if you had like a list of links that you were clicking over here, even though this view might fail, you'd be able to still have an interactive page through the composing layout. We learned a handful of new special files and uh, how to use them in a next route, uh, the error loading and not found special files. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching this week to recap on the async features of the next JS 13 beta app directory router. Uh, I'm super excited to cover this. Uh, if you want to follow along with React Holiday, we are next going to be building up an application. And I think it's going to be some kind of like podcast type app that gets data and uses links and you know, will fail if it does. I don't know, we're gonna use all these features in an actual app. So sign up today and uh, I hope to see you in your inbox. Uh, if not, I'll see you next week right here. Bye.